What's up guys? Today we are taking a look at the additions of one of my all-time favorites, Tokyo Ghoul by Sui Ishida. It follows King Kaneki, who is an ordinary college student until an encounter with a ghoul, a humanoid that survives off human flesh, transforms him into the first half-human, half-ghoul hybrid. One of Tokyo Ghoul's biggest strong suits is that its main character, Kaneki, exists between two worlds, that of the humans and the ghouls, which places him in the middle of the two. On top of that, it has one of the best MCs and stories in all of seinen manga, and Sui Ishida's aesthetic and art style is one of the most unique I've ever witnessed. If you are wondering if it's worth reading even though you watch the anime, it definitely is. The anime changed a lot, and I mean a lot, in regards to the story. They swapped the timing of events on some occasions, left out elements altogether, and more. If you are looking to get into Tokyo Ghoul for the first time, the manga is hands down the best way to get into the series. That all being said, Tokyo Ghoul is one of the top manga I recommend, but what's the best way to collect it? As it currently stands, Tokyo Ghoul and its 14 volumes have been released with English translation in three formats, the individual volumes which are collected in the manga box set, and the Tokyo Ghoul Monster Editions, which were released exclusively at Barnes & Noble. Tokyo Ghoul Re, which is a sequel to Tokyo Ghoul, also received an individual as well as a complete box set release, and it's complete with 16 volumes. The Tokyo Ghoul box set collects all 14 volumes of Tokyo Ghoul, and the monster editions are 3-in-1s with the final volume being a 2-in-1, and there are 5 in total to collect. Let's take a look at their size first. The individual volumes of Tokyo Ghoul were released under Viz's SIG imprint, so they are larger than their Shonen Jump releases. So they are the same size as series like Dora Hedoro and Gainsta. While the SIG volumes are 8.1 inches tall, the monster editions are almost 10 inches tall. They are wider too at 6.9 inches versus the singles 5.7 inches. To give you an idea, they are about the same size as something like the Attack on Titan Colossal Editions, but they are still a little smaller than they are. I also want to talk about how the art looks in the Monster Editions because this is their biggest positive. The panels look even more incredible in this larger format, and especially the two-page spreads. Sui Ishida's art already looks amazing in the singles, but the Monster Editions are the best way to experience his art in my opinion. The monster editions also save you a bit of space on the shelf too. You will need more vertical space, but horizontally they save you around 2.5 inches. Another big consideration is the cost. The Tokyo Ghoul individuals retail for $12.99, so to collect all 14, it would be around $181.86. The box set retails for $149.99. The Tokyo Ghoul monster editions, on the other hand, are all over the place in terms of price. With the unavailability of the Tokyo Ghoul Monster Editions, they are being sold on sites like eBay for high aftermarket prices, particularly the first volume, which commonly goes for around 200 or more. The whole set recently sold for 800 but you can get lucky on bids sometimes. Someone recently got them on bids for 400 as well. So if you bid or shop around, you can get them for cheaper than on Buy It Now listings. The Monster Editions are definitely the most expensive way to collect the series. But with the volumes being unlisted from being in sight and the fact that they are theorized to be out of print, we may never see these editions again. I don't like to say never though because we've been getting a lot of unexpected reprints and re-releases lately, but as it currently stands, these are the highest priced editions. That all being said, the cheapest way to fully collect the series would be via the manga box sets, which save you around $32 in comparison to buying all the individuals. In addition to cost, availability may be a factor in your choice as well, because a lot of the Tokyo Ghoul Monster Editions volumes are no longer available on Barnes & Noble's website. You may find a stray volume, most notably the final volume here and there in store or online, but they unfortunately are hard as well as quite costly to come across. They are also a Barnes & Noble exclusive release, so they were only available there, whereas the other two are available across multiple retailers and are more accessible for purchase worldwide. It's actually in stock at the time of posting this video while supplies last on sites such as Book Depository, Write Stuff, and Barnes & Noble if you are in search of it. Let's check out the design and quality of the editions next. I reviewed the Attack on Titan Colossal Editions on the channel also, so if you saw that video, you may notice similar issues with the Monster Editions. The covers are really cool with their design and illustrations, and I love the overall aesthetics of them, but since they are paperback, they are prone to dense increases. The spines look great on display with each one featuring different colors, but they too are prone to creases and you really have to be careful while reading and putting these back on the shelf. Overall, they feature bold colors and full artwork of the characters and the spines look great on the shelf too. 
I do wish they would have made these hardcover instead of paperback though, but I personally decided to purchase them regardless because I love their larger format. When it comes down to it, what makes the Monster Editions unique is their larger format and their unique design. The individual volumes, on the other hand, allow you to collect each cover, which all look amazing, by the way. I really enjoy Sui Yoshida's aesthetic, and both editions look good in their own right, and I enjoy the design of each. The individual volumes are less flashy on the shelf than the Monster Editions, but in a good way. They are matte white, are more uniform, and they have a clean look to them. I want to take a look at the box set's design real quick too because it's one of my favorites. I love the artwork they chose to showcase on this one and it looks good all around, especially with this front artwork of Kaneki pulling down his mask which wraps around onto one of the sides. The Tokyo Ghoul logo is minimally featured in the corner which I like too. On the other side we have artwork of Rize, Kaneki, and Jason and on the back we have all of the characters featured on all 14 covers. Inside, we have artwork of Rize and Kaneki and some little mementos from the series on the sides. What about print and page quality? Both editions of Tokyo Ghoul have good print quality, but the Tokyo Ghoul Monster editions were printed on glossy white paper, while the individuals are printed on off-white paper that has an eggshell-like texture. The printing is more crisp in the Monster editions, but this of course is just due to the type of paper it's printed on. The pages aren't thin either, and they are thicker in comparison to other paperback releases of this size. So the paper and print quality in the Monster Editions is awesome. The singles are good too, though. They are SIG volumes, which are larger, so the artwork stands out more than standard releases, and the paper is thicker, so you really can't go wrong here. But the Monster Editions do have that glossy, thicker paper, which makes everything look just a tad bit sharper, and the midtones stand out even more in them too allowing for better visibility so that you can see even more details in the panels. Definitely giving this one to the Monster Editions. As far as the translation, sound effects, and lettering go, they are the same in both editions after a side-by-side read-through. I didn't see any changes or differences, so nothing to report here. In terms of readability, since the Tokyo Ghoul Monster Editions are as thick as editions like the AOT Colossal Editions, I found them easier to read. All the Monster Editions collect three volumes of Tokyo Ghoul, aside from the final edition which collects two volumes. These are just the right amount of thickness because few if any words or panels disappeared, which is something that larger paperback issues commonly have an issue with. Now this still sometimes happens, maybe towards the beginning of the volumes, but far less frequently than any other manga I've seen printed in this larger paperback format. The easiest edition to read is still the singles though. The monster editions are of course heavier and due to their larger size aren't as comfortable to read. You do have to lay them somewhere to read which some may or may not like. If you're looking to read in hand or are looking for portability, the singles may be a better choice for you. As far as extras go, the monster editions don't really have any extras per se, but they do have illustration galleries which feature the individual cover art of the volumes that are included in each edition. So in edition 1, we have volumes 1 through 3's cover art and so on. The manga box set is the only edition that comes with extras. It comes with a double-sided poster which features Kaneki wearing his mask on the front and Toka and Kaneki on the back. Now that we've taken a look at all of the editions, what's the best way to collect Tokyo Ghoul? This one isn't as clear-cut for me as the rest of them have been because they both have the same lettering, translation, and sound effects. The monster editions don't come with any extras aside from the cover art galleries and the box set comes with a double-sided poster. The print quality is the best in the monster editions and the artwork looks absolutely amazing thanks to the larger format. They could have improved on some things though, like the overall quality of the volumes. The fact that they are paperback makes them prone to dense increases and you have to handle them with care while reading more so than the singles. But when I open them up, I can't deny the way the panels look and I find myself captivated by them all over again. They also have a more bold look to them if you prefer that, while the singles have a more uniform, clean look if you're more so a fan of that aesthetic. Design-wise, I personally like both though. With the Monster Edition's high cost and lack of availability, I would say the manga box set is the way to go right now because it's the cheapest way to collect Tokyo Ghoul and the singles look incredible. It's more widely available for purchase worldwide too, so it's definitely easier to shop than the Monster Editions, which are available now for high aftermarket prices. If you can find them for decent prices and you love larger formats or are looking to experience the series in a new edition, the Monster Editions are definitely worth owning in my opinion after owning and reading through both. If you are new to the series though, I'd say the manga box set is the best way to go since it's much cheaper and is of great quality. What do you guys think? What's your favorite way to collect Tokyo Ghoul? Let me know. I hope this video was helpful and hope you all are having an awesome week. 
Thank you so much as always for watching and I'll see you all next time.